It's no secret that America's culinary landscape is changing, and that change is bringing along more than a few difficulties for longtime staples in the restaurant industry. One chain that's starting to close a lot of doors is Steak and Shake. Here are some of the reasons for the chain slide. In May 2019, Steak and Shake announced it had temporarily closed 44 restaurants, according to QSR Magazine. There's a sign here on the door saying they will be closed until a new franchise owner comes in, and that has quite a few customers very disappointed. At the time of the announcement, there were 367 corporate locations and 213 franchise stores in operation. Those numbers were down quite a bit from the previous year, when the company had 415 corporate-run locations and 201 franchise stores. Customer traffic fell 7.7% in the first quarter of 2019, and same-store sales fell 5.1% over the course of 2018. That followed two more years of sales losses, and that's not good for anyone involved. All in all, 2018 ended with a $10.7 million loss, according to IBJ. And in the first quarter of 2019, the company had a loss of a whopping $18.9 million. Steak and Shake is part of Big Lari Holdings, and when chairman and CEO Sadar Big Lari addressed shareholders in their annual meeting, he made it clear that a turnaround was going to take time. Does Steak and Shake have that kind of time? It's hard to tell, but no business can sustain those kind of losses for too long. In August 2018, the company announced it was selling off some corporate-run locations for a shockingly low price, just a $10,000 initial franchise fee. For comparison, it costs a $45,000 fee to franchise a Taco Bell. Head honcho Sadar Biglari announced he was making the shift for almost humanitarian reasons. I want to provide an opportunity to other entrepreneurs who are highly motivated to excel but lack the financial means. Those entrepreneurs would have to complete a training program and would get 50% of their restaurant's profits, which doesn't sound like a bad deal. Our whole goal here is to provide our customers with a consistent gold standard dining experience. A month later, Steak and Shake announced the response had been amazing, but that it would be a while before any location made it into franchisee hands. But by May 2019, IBJ reported that they had only signed four of these new franchisees, making it look likely that the majority of the locations would stay closed. Perhaps part of why the franchises didn't sell was Steak and Shake's checkered relationship with at least one franchisee. According to Restaurant Business, a nine-location franchisee in Virginia filed a lawsuit after corporate refused to let them raise prices. While Steak and Shake's CFO of Franchise Operations Tom Murray said that not raising prices was an important part of keeping the brand uniform, the Virginia franchisee said that they were being forced to take, quote, substantial financial losses because of overcharges from vendors. Transport charge, storage surcharge, additional overcharge, finder's fee. Finder's fee was on the lot! Yeah, that's right. The franchisee also alleged that corporate declined to provide agreed-upon support services, such as fixing errors on menus and the website, and charged random fees without any explanation of what they were paying for. In 2015, a Minneapolis-based investor group made a big push to grab control of Big Lari Holdings and, in turn, Steak and Shake. It was incredibly messy, with accusations flying from both sides. According to the Indie Star, Big Lari Holdings was quick to play up alleged connections that the leader of the investor group was a man who supposedly was convicted of running a Ponzi scheme in 2010. The investors, on the other hand, condemned Big Lari as overpaid and using his position to hire his family members. Big Lari Holdings stresses, however, that those family members are paid less than $120,000 a year. Nepotism! Big Lari himself took over in 2008 and kicked prior management to the curb. While Big Lari Holdings lauded what they saw as, quote, one of the great brand turnarounds in the history of the restaurant industry, all of their numbers continue to slide in the present day. Big Lari remained in control in spite of the conflict. In 2015, Big Lari Holdings was singing the praises of Sadar Big Lari in Fortune, saying he was responsible for the re-evaluation of Steak and Shake into something sublime. Just a few years later, Big Lari was apologizing. He originally did right by the company, according to QSR Magazine. When he took over in 2008, Steak and Shake was losing around $100,000 a day. After a year of Big Lari's leadership, 
the company was making $100,000 a day, but the downward slide kicked in again after a few years. Why? As Biglari wrote, we failed customers by not being fast and friendly. Essentially, Steak and Shake banked on making money by selling a lot of food for cheap, but they didn't put updated equipment and processes in place to keep up with the market or the demand. They ended up putting out a product that was slow, high cost, and labor intensive. Not only does that mean each steak burger ended up costing them more to produce than it should have, but it also meant that customers weren't likely to come back when they know they've got to plan on waiting, hanging around, and waiting some more for that burger. In February 2019, Big Larry said the company was in the process of increasing efficiency. A group of 286 managers took Steak and Shake to court in 2019, seeking a $7.7 million judgment. They claimed that Steak and Shake had unlawfully labeled them as exempt from receiving overtime pay and regularly demanded they work 50 hours or more in a week. Part of that work, the suit claimed, was non-managerial work they had to do because the restaurants were understaffed. According to Restaurant Business, that lawsuit covers mainly the area of St. Louis, which was, incidentally, the same area where those 44 locations were closed pending transfer to franchisee hands. There's a similar lawsuit that covers more than 1,000 managers working in other parts of the country, and that one is still waiting to be settled. In early 2019, IBJ reported that Sadar Biglari was warning his shareholders that turning Steak and Shake's fortune around was going to take time. But the clock is ticking on a $184 million loan that's coming due in March 2021. At the time Big Lari was attempting to calm his shareholders, the entire company was only worth $211 million. Some of the lenders have gone as far as hiring legal counsel to find out what their options are if things continue to spiral downward. Thus began the debt. Crushing debt. There is the potential for a way out. In theory, Big Lari Holdings could guarantee to cover Steak and Shake's debts if the whole thing goes sideways, but Big Lari has refused even though they would be paying a much lower interest rate on those debts. According to CBS News, part of Big Lari's plan to save the company involved cutting costs, specifically around $1 million a year. By getting rid of the cherries that have been on top of Steak and Shake's trademark milkshakes for more than 80 years, how well is that going to go over with longtime fans? In addition to saving money by removing the cherries, IBJ reported that Big Lari offered up plans to reinvent and patent the milkshake-making process. The idea was to help speed up service. But when Big Lari added that it was going to cost $40 million to update equipment and put the plan into action, investors were doubtful. According to Nation's Restaurant News, Sadar Big Lari technically earns $900,000 per year as CEO of Steak and Shake parent company Big Lari Holdings. But Big Lari Holdings also pays a massive amount of incentives to Big Lari Capital, which the CEO himself owns. When all is said and done, Big Lari took home $32.5 million in 2016, more than the combined salaries of the CEOs of Chipotle and McDonald's. It's complicated. Steak and Shake isn't the only restaurant in the mix because Big Lari's also making money off his investments in Cracker Barrel. Yet even as Steak and Shake lost tons of money, Restaurant Business reported that in March 2019, Big Lari Holdings removed the cap on the pay package its CEO can receive. Previously, the CEO pay package was capped at $10 million, but no more. The pay cap removal came after a series of changes that put Big Lari himself firmly in control of the firm's holdings. He also owns enough stock that he has controlling voting rights, too. People are becoming more and more aware of where their food comes from. Even the most die-hard carnivores are beginning to admit animal welfare and ethically raised meat are hugely important. According to QSR, the trend to press chain restaurants into sourcing their meat and other animal products from responsible, humane farms really started in 2007 with Burger King and Carl's Jr. Hardee's changing their policies. Many others, but not all, were quick to follow. Steak and Shake has been one of those lagging behind, and they've been called out for it. 
In 2016 and 2017, Cruelty Free Investing reported that the chain still had no plans to even begin the switch to cage-free eggs. It's a big deal for investors as well as customers. In 2017, Folio Institutional issued a press release on its partnership with the Humane Society of the United States. The goal was to create a list of corporations that were lacking in their commitment to animal welfare standards in order to better guide investors who wanted to steer clear of companies without policies regarding the treatment of farm animals. Topping the list was Big Lari Holdings and Steak and Shake. Everyone loves a milkshake once in a while, but that's the thing. It's usually just once in a while. There are a ton of health-conscious consumers out there, and even if you're not looking for an ultra-healthy, super-delicious meal that's still affordable, it's safe to say you're also not looking for a heart attack on a plate. And if you hit Steak and Shake, well, there aren't that many options there that aren't kind of bad for you. Steak and Shake has the distinction of being named in the Center for Science and the Public Interest's Extreme Eating Awards. In 2015, their completely unnecessary 7x7 steak burger and fries, which has 7 patties and 7 slices of cheese, and chocolate fudge brownie milkshake made it onto the list, coming in at a whopping 2,530 calories and 68 grams of saturated fat combined. That's enough to make your arteries start to clog just thinking about it. When SFGate looked at the potential healthy options there, there wasn't a heck of a lot. They recommended just the mini steak burger shooter, noting that even the healthier sounding turkey club came with your entire day's worth of sodium. That's unfortunate, because in the 21st century, restaurants really must have a few decently healthy choices to keep all their customers happy and coming back through the doors. Is this the end for Steak and Shake? It's tough to say because the chain has recovered from the brink before. Sadar Biglari turned it around in 2008 and a complete overhaul of the business model helped keep it relevant. As of 2019, Steak and Shake is looking at a shakeup that QSR Magazine says will take a minimum of three years to complete. For the first 78 years Steak and Shake was around, it was strictly a chain of sit-down restaurants. The quick service format is something that's still pretty new, and it opened up a whole host of new possibilities not the least of which involves catering to a younger, university crowd. Unfortunately, it also opened up the company to a lot of problems, and that's what execs are going to need to rectify, especially now that a large portion of franchise units are counter-service only. That's a far cry from what they used to be, and while that isn't necessarily a bad thing, the company still has a long way to go to streamline processes from start to finish. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about restaurant chains are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.